This is the first time since 2002 that we've been back in our hotel room before 10 o'clock. And the reason being is that there are no South Africans to celebrate with because the only South Africans that we know at the Dubai World Cup are working very hard and are going back to the stables to look after their horses, namely Zahn Thompson and his friend and colleague Francie Herald. I'm sure there are many other South Africans here, including V and Vanessa Moodley, but we haven't really seen much of them on the evening. And we're here to report on behalf of World Sports Betting, because even though the Saudi Cup with $20 million is $8 million richer than the Dubai World Cup at $12 million, it really is a well-tried and tested recipe. Going since 1996, when Cigar was victorious for Alan Paulson and Jerry Bailey, this year we saw the Japanese dominate yet again as they did last year and it looks like the land of the rising sun has a roller coaster ride for the rest of eternity with the planning that has gone into their breeding programs and they seem to be sweeping all before them. But in order for the story to be told we're going to hook up with a young man who has got enormous knowledge and his name is Chad Summers. He's a trainer and a former winner of the Golden Shaheen on two separate occasions with a horse called Mind Your Biscuits, who had a winner today in the UAE Derby. And Chad is just an absolute mindful of information. And we caught up with him after the running of the last race to give us some insight into the UAE Derby, the Dubai Turf, the Golden Shaheen, of course, the Shima Classic, and then finally the Dubai World Cup, which turned out to be an absolute meltdown for those horses who went to the head of affairs. The horse that won the race, I couldn't actually believe my eyes. He was stone motherless last going into the first turn. I was standing at around about the 1500 meter mark to get them coming around the turn. And I thought to myself, well, this horse obviously didn't jump out the gate and He's probably going to get pulled up, but he ended up winning the race. And so without any further ado, here is Chad Summers to unpack the 2023 renewal of the Dubai World Cup. Chad, we started the beginning of the week at the bottom of the chute. We're now at the top of the chute, and I'm sure that's just how you feel. No, an amazing day. An amazing day of racing. I mean, from start to finish, great races, great performances, memorable performances. I mean, performances that we'll probably remember for the rest of our lives. A superstar was born, and then maybe a, a superstars are coming, and just really just a great day and, and good results for all the countries. I mean, 13 countries represented, and I think almost all 13 of them are going to go home happy. Before we get to analyzing some of the races, the emotion that was displayed without being visible, just knowing what was going through your heart as a, as a trainer that trained Mind Your Biscuits to two Golden Shaheen victories, and seeing one of his sons deliver at the highest level must have been extraordinary. Look, he's a horse that uh, I owe everything to and uh, I'll always remember with, with great memories. And he's, uh, he's doing it in Japan now and he's, he's doing great as a stallion. He was the leading freshman sire over there. But, you know, we always believed in the horse. We believed the horse can do anything, whether it be sprinting and winning a Golden Shaheen or running in the Breeders' Cup Classic over 2,000 meters. And, you know, a lot of people thought we were crazy when we tried to stretch him out. But uh, I think we saw today that in his son, Derma Sadagaki, that uh, he can stretch out and hopefully he can make his father proud on the first Saturday in May in Kentucky. Well, as uh, the winner of the UAE Derby was disappearing into the blue, I could see you thinking to yourself, I wonder how these guys didn't listen to me because <laughs> I think you could sell ice to an Eskimo. I don't know how they didn't listen to you. Look, I think uh, just one of those things. You know, he was uh, kind of a... a a regular pedigree, you know, kind of a hard hat horse. He wasn't, you know, the fancy, splashiest horse in the world. But, I mean, we always believed in him. And we wanted to stand them in America, just couldn't find uh, the right partner. And I had to do the right thing by my partners. Um, and by that point, you know, the, the best option was to, to send him to Japan. And, you know, look, the, the thing with Japan that we were excited about going to Japan is the Yoshida family and what they represent. You see the success that the Japanese have had over the last several years now uh, in our international events. A lot of that is due to the Yoshida family. Um, it started with their father and now the two brothers uh, and passing on to their children as well that they breed the best of the best. And it's not just guessing. They, they put a lot of time and effort and energy into finding these stallions and mares to mix together, uh, to come together. He had 103 foals uh, in his first crop, Dermos Nadagaki being the, the best one right now. Um, but it was, it was interesting because when I saw him at the Saudi Cup, he ran in the Saudi Derby, and I got to watch him train every day, and it was a lot of fun because I would say, uh, hey, there's baby biscuits, and the rider would look at me, and he goes, yes, yes, I know. I said, I used to train the father. He said, yes, yes, I know. 
And uh, it was a little short form, which is funny because Mind Your Biscuits was a sprinter at, at first. Uh, and that race was over a mile. But uh, we thought he'd be able to stretch out. And he showed just what a wonderful horse he is and taking them gate to wire. It's not an easy thing to do over this uh, unusual 1900 meter distance. And uh, he was just really, really awesome. And it's, you know, brings back all the memories we have starting in 2017, 2018 and, and all the ones in between. You say he got 103 falls. That's remarkable. Do you think he would have got that kind of support in the States? I mean, I would have tried. I would have called the phone book and done everything I can. I would have sold the seasons myself. But, uh, look, I think he was well represented. He's going to be well represented now in the future. Um, this will be obviously his, his best crop, you know, the bears that he get this year into year four. And, you know, I think the Yoshida family is very happy with the, uh, the purchase they made of Minor Biscuits. And uh, I think all the American breeders can get a good look at his son in Kentucky on the first Saturday of May. I'm kicking myself because we were on the bus with young Chelsea, the work rider that, that rode. At the end of the day, he's a composer that just denied Switzerland of his second victory. Yeah, great, great race. Race of the day. I mean, as far as, you know, to the finish, obviously we saw some remarkable finishes, whether it be in the World Cup or in the Shima Classic. But the, as far as the race of the day, uh, has to be the Shaheen exciting finish. We knew they'd go fast early, which they did. Uh, Switzerland, it just took him just a second to get out. He got in the clear and, and Ty came with a huge run. It looked at him at the wire like he might have won. But uh, Sibelius, give all the credit to Ryan Moore, too, and obviously young trainer Jeremiah O'Dwyer. I mean, <laughs> Jeremiah... He was here before. They used to call him Goose. He was just a work rider a long time ago in Dubai, and he always said that he'd come back. And he came back in 2020, and he got sent home. Uh, he was here for the UAE Derby, and they canceled racing because of COVID-19, and he said, I'll be back. And now he's back, and this is his first runner. And uh, the horse was touting himself all week long. Uh, he was posing for pictures for you and anybody else that would pay attention to him. And Laura King had a daily uh, Sibelius watch every day he would, uh, he would go on the track. And, I mean, just the, the guts from Ryan Moore to come up the rail like that. Um, obviously worked out a good trip. Hopkins wasn't able to protect the rail. Ryan Moore knew it. He was a tiring horse, and he took advantage of it and just got his head up in front. But uh, that was every bit of short head uh, that the result said it was. Lord North Sublime, probably never see that again in our lives before, having been privileged enough to see Wright approach and Paolini dead heat, last year dead heat, this year clear, as the commentator said, he's not going to have to share. You know, it'll be interesting to see if he comes back next year. Frankie's calling it quits. We'll see if Lord North calls it quits next year yeah. too. But, man, I mean, to do it three years in a row, I mean, John Gazin and his son Thaddy Gazin, the, the job they've done with that horse is remarkable. There was a time last year when he didn't go to Saudi that we thought he might be retired. You know, he had, a, I think, a throat operation Terrible. at some point, and um, it, was, it was touch and go if he'd ever run again. Uh, prepped over an all-weather surface and, and, uh, and then came over here last year and dead heated with Pantaloza, who came back and won the, the Saudi Cup this year, and, and now to do what he did this year and, and to work out a great trip. I mean, just bravo to all the connections on him. And, and three years in a row, that's something you're right. I don't, I don't really think we'll see again. Just as Armand I was a horse for the ages, so too have we seen an absolute massacre in the Shima. Listen, the buzz horse coming in here was Equinox. And we talked to some well-known Japanese connections when we got here at the beginning of the week. And they had 27 runners, and we talked to them. And, and they're sharp. The, the Japanese connections, they know their horses. And they said to me, we know Equinox will win. It will be by how much. The other horses, we want to know if they will win. Well, they won three. But Equinox certainly was the start, and the answer was three and a half lengths, and probably could have been about 13 and a half lengths. So, to, to, to talk to some of the losing connections after the race, from, from Charlie Appleby to, to some of the jockeys, you know, all of them just in awe of, of the performance of Equinox. I mean, just an unbelievable performance. And, you know, whether he goes the route of the, the Arc de Triomphe for the Breeders' Cup uh, turf will be one that will follow, especially since the winner of the Dubai World Cup just said he wants to go to the Arc de Triomphe. So maybe they will, uh, they'll match up over there. We'll see what happens. Well, I've been coming to this race since 2002, and I have never ever seen a Dubai World Cup field decimated with a pace that was set early. I was on the first turn. I thought that the horse coming into the first turn, dead last by a long way, was going to pull up. I thought to myself, it's not possible. I didn't realize how fast they were going, but when I saw them fold like a pack of cards, horses that were on the lead and the hard luck stories, speaking to Ryan Moore, speaking to Frankie, it's just suicidal, that pace. 
Okay, it was faster than we thought. We knew Pantaloza was going to lead. I, I don't think anybody saw Bupad Seymour with remorse and Bendu going to going to chase him and challenge him as as fast and early as they did. And looked like maybe for a second they were going to hold on. And Algiers made the run that we knew he was going to he was going to make. He'd been so devastating with those kicks he made the first yeah. two uh, two races he ran here locally in, in Dubai this year. So you know, obviously a, a horse to beat. But uh, people have to pay attention to this jockey in Japan. He's the leading jockey right now. Obviously, Christoph Lemaire and Yutaka Taki and uh, some of those jockeys get all the credit. But this guy. I mean, he's the leading jockey over there, and he rode like it. He rode like, I'm the best, I'm on the best horse, and I'm just going to I'm gonna will myself to victory. And just kind of, the good thing with that horse almost, and this is kind of ironic, he was so far behind that he was behind the kickback. So he avoided the kickback by being an extra five lengths behind. I don't think that was their plan. But by being an extra five lengths behind, it kept him cleaner gave him more confidence and so when he made that run and came outside he was relatively clean his silks are very very clean for a horse that was desperately last early on in the race and uh, just all the credit to them very emotional moment with his son in the uh, the winners enclosure and you know very happy for the connections involved Japan wanted to win the Saudi Cup they wanted to win the Dubai World Cup they came out in force and in numbers and and they got the job done so you know all credit to uh, to Japan for sure you know the horse that needs to be mentioned in this race is Emblem Road I mean Emblem Road if you want to talk about a horse that had a bad trip I mean he was Buried, buried, and when he finally got a chance to go outside, he made a move that was similar to the Saudi Cup from 2021 or 2022. Yeah. Looked phenomenal. We'll see him in the Breeders' Cup, and he's a horse with a very, very promising future uh, it's on a quality road. Do you have any long-term vision as far as the Kentucky Derby is concerned? I know it's still a way off, but have you seen anything that excites you? I know my friend Greg Watson says that there are many trials still happening and will continue to happen. Yeah, today today was kind of the start of the, the last go-rounds. It starts here in Dubai, and you know not only does Derma Sadagaki go, but the horse that was second, uh, he has 40 points now, and they've indicated that they have every intention of going, so we'll see two Japanese horses. Uh, the last road to the uh, European Kentucky Derby is next weekend. Uh, they're giving every indication that they're going to go. So now that's three spots. So three spots will be taken up. Uh, whether you like it or not, that's uh, draw your own conclusions, but that's the way it goes. So there'll be 17 spots left for the American horses. Forte, obviously, uh, off the Breeders' Cup win, off his first win of the year, is is squarely the horse to beat Son of Violence. The question will be if he can see out the 2,000 meters, being with his pedigree. Uh, it gives no indication that he can't. Uh, but that'll be the one kind of remaining thing left to click off on the CV is whether or not he can do that. And, and we'll see. Today we got the Louisiana Derby with a horse named Instant Coffee that we're, we're very excited about. And, uh, and, and the beat will go on, as they say. But uh, tune in for the next three weeks as, uh, as the field gets firmly set. As Instant Coffee has the black cap. In the meantime, it's still Kings Barnes. Kings Barnes, one for long to go. And Kings Barnes looking to finish them off in the Louisiana Derby. And Kings Barnes has opened up. Five lengths now on Disarm, who's gained second from Jason's Road. Chopper's Revenge. Instant Coffee is next, but it's Kings Barnes and Flavian Pratt. Kings Barnes, undefeated, three for three.